A Night Piece on Death by Thomas Parnell By the blue taper's trembling light No more I waste the wakeful night Intent with endless view to pour The schoolmen and the sages for Their books from wisdom widely stray or point at best the longest way. I'll seek a readier path and go where wisdom surely talk below. How deep yon azure dies the sky where orbs of gold unnumbered lie while through their ranks in silver pride the never crescent seems to glide. The slumbering breeze forgets to breathe. The lake is smooth and clear beneath. Where well, once again the spangled show descend to meet our eyes below. The grounds which on the right aspire in dimness from the view retire. The left presents a place of graves whose wall the silent water laves. That steeple guides thy doubtful sight among the livid gleams of night. There pass with melancholy state by all the solemn heaps of fate. And think, as softly sad you tread, above the venerable dead. Time was, like thee, they life possessed, and time shall be that thou shalt rest. Those graves with bending osier bound, that nameless heave, the crumpled ground. Quick to the glancing thought disclose, where toil and poverty repose. The flat smooth stones that bear a name, the chiseled slender help to fame. Which ere are set, our friends decay, their frequent steps may wear away. A middle race of mortals own, men half ambitious, all unknown. The marble tombs that rise on high whose dead in vaulted arches lie, whose pillows swell with sculpted stones, arms, angels, epitaphs, and bones. These, all the poor remains of state, adorn the rich or praise the great, who, while on earth in fame they live, are senseless, of the fame they give. Ha! While I gaze, pale Cynthia fades, the bursting earth unveils the shades. All slow and wan and wrapped with shrouds, they rise in visionary crowds, and all with sombre accent cry, think, mortal, what it is to die. Now from yon black and funeral you that bathes the charnel house with dew, methinks I hear a voice begin. Ye ravens, cease your croaking din. Ye tolling clocks, no time resound o'er the long lake and midnight ground. It sends a peal of hollow groans. Thus speaking from among the bones. When men may scythe and dart supply, How great a king of fears am I. They view me like the last of things They make, and then they dread my stings. Fools, if you less provoked your fears, no more my spectre form appears. 
Death's but a path that must be trod if man would ever pass to God. A port of calms, a state of ease from the rough rage of swelling seas. Why then, by flowing sable stoles, deep pendant cypress, morning poles, loose scarfs to fall athwart thy weeds, long pools, drawn hearses, covered steeds, and plumes of black that, as they tread, not o'er the scutcheons of the dead, nor can the parted body know, nor wants the soul these forms of woe. As men who long in prison dwell, with lamps that glimmer round the cell, whene'er the suffering years are run, spring forth to greet the glittering sun. Such joy, though far transcendent sense, have pious souls at parting hence. On earth and in the body placed, a few and evil years they waste. But when their chains are cast aside, see the glad scene unfolding wide. Clap the glad wing and tower away, and mingle with the blaze of day.